Hi there and welcome back. So after conducting an effective content audit, the content strategy development team should know something about the maturity level of content operations in the organization or unit publishing that content, even if you don't know to call it that yet. Knowing the current maturity level helps the team design a content strategy. To that end, I've divided this video lecture into three parts. I'll start by saying a little about common content strategy tactics. Then I'll move on to cover how industry defines possible levels of maturity in an organization for their content operations. And the remainder of the lecture connects tactics to strategic directions for increasing maturity within a content strategy. Let's do it. Because this is my final lecture in TECM 5200, let me take a second to remind you that we really did not have time to talk in any detail about the activities involved in what Nichols calls the implementation and governance phases, the later phases of a content strategy project. Because of our limited time frame, we've focused primarily on what goes into designing a roadmap. You've gone through the discovery or plan and assess phase of a project by completing a content inventory and assessment. You've also gone through the gap analysis or define phase of a project by summarizing your findings in a content assessment or audit report. At this point in the process, your task is to design the best path forward to close the gap between the present state and the desired future state by creating a strategic roadmap. This lecture has been designed precisely to help you do that. I want to begin by sharing the most common tactics for implementing a content strategy. Research from three content strategy experts has established a list of content strategy tactics. The researchers were Carrie Hain, Dina Lewis, and Hilary Marsh. They surveyed and interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people working in associations and nonprofits. As the researchers wrote, let me quote, Associations are a perfect place to study content strategy because they're in the content business, providing value to members through content such as educational programs, member resources, advocacy efforts, publications, and conferences. End of quote. So here is the long list of tactics. Hopefully, you've already read about them in one of the two publications that the research spawned. One appeared in a sponsored industry report and the other in STC's intercom. By the way, if you see a new or different term in the list on this slide, it's because they weren't identical in the two publications. Before I show you some results from the research, it's important for me to point out that the research respondents in this study did not identify themselves as technical communicators. Rather, they identified themselves in these areas. So one interesting finding was that respondents believed all of the tactics were valuable. Note, purple bars are all above the midpoint of the scale. Turns out those tactics they found the easiest to put into practice were the ones most adopted. In this research, that meant the most used tactics were collecting analytics, conducting audience surveys, using a planning calendar, and interviewing stakeholders. It also meant that while content audits, for example, were seen as highly valuable, only 48% of respondents reported doing them because they're not that easy to complete. Similarly, only 29% reported modeling content, and just 23% had developed a metadata strategy. Another important finding was that two events explained why an association developed a content strategy. One, the association hired a new top executive whose strategic vision included a content strategy. And two, the association decided to redesign their main website. One additional insight was that associations were at different levels of maturity where content was concerned. I'll move on to that topic in the next part of the lecture. Let me introduce you to the concept of content operations maturity. Based on their research, Hain, Lewis, and Marsh categorized the associations at which their respondents worked into three levels of content strategy maturity. At the lowest level, they called it beginning. There was a new awareness. It was focused on one person or one department. They probably had some new metrics to look at. 
and they adopted up to six of the tactics that were listed in the research. At the intermediate level, there was growing awareness. Multiple departments were involved that included new workflows. Multiple channels of publication were involved, and they had adopted 7 to 13 of the listed tactics. At the advanced level, there was an organization-wide commitment to content strategy and content. Processes were standardized. They were making data-driven decisions. They'd adopted more than 14 of the tactics. It's true these experts placed a good deal of emphasis on the number of tactics being used in order to determine maturity level. That is certainly a relatively straightforward and simple way to diagnose an organization, but it's not the only way. It turns out there are several models of content operations maturity. I've included links to a few in the instructional materials for this module on Canvas. As one example, Colleen Jones at Content Science categorized an organization's content operations maturity into five levels. Recently, in 2021, Jones wrote, I quote, content operations is the behind the scenes work of managing content activities as effectively and efficiently as possible. Today, content operations often require a mix of elements related to people, process, and technology. That's the end of the quote. I am convinced that understanding content operations is a prerequisite to successfully implementing any strategy. The first and most comprehensive maturity model related to content operations was created by Joanne Hackus. Joanne was president of a techcom consulting company called ComTech and founding director of something called the Center for Information Development Management, or CIDM. This picture of her was taken in 2015, just a couple of years before she retired. I want you to take a minute and scan these questions. In her consulting practice, Joanne heard these from tech comm professionals trying to manage information development or content operations over and over and over because models of process maturity were well accepted in both software and hardware development, Joanne wanted content professionals to answer these questions in a way that the engineers in their organizations would understand. She created the Information Process Maturity Model, or IPMM, in 1992. It's been updated over the years based on research and feedback from the tech comm professionals in management positions that belong to CIDM. Hopefully, you've already read a little about the IPMM. This slide offers a brief overview of the model's five maturity levels. Yes, five seems to be the magic number for most maturity models. Level one's labeled ad hoc. Other models label it reactive or chaotic. There's a lack of structure and uniform practices. Mostly, content creators work independent of each other. Level two is labeled rudimentary. Other models label this level tactical or piloting. There are some new structures being adopted, some uniform practices. There's some collaboration among content creators, but... All of that falls apart when the people are pressured by deadlines or staff or budget issues. Level three is labeled repeatable. Other models label it scaling or integrated. So there are now some best practices for processes and some quality assurance standards. There's a strong content leader. They're hiring qualified content creators or professionals. There is some external awareness within the organization of content operations. Level four is labeled managed. Other models label it strategic. Sorry, somehow some of my text has been cut off here, but the idea at this level is that quality assurance and other best practices are in place and they exist outside leadership. In other words, if a leader changes, the same practices are adopted and continued. There is now significant external awareness and involvement. So both people outside content operations know about the content people and the content people are involved in things beyond content operations. 
The highest level, level five, is labeled optimizing. It's also labeled something like strategic or thriving in other models. There's now leadership, content leadership across the organization, uh, innovation in all of its content operations. One of the things I want to mention about maturity models is everyone recognizes large organizations might have multiple levels of maturity in different business units that are associated with content. It's also important for you to understand that unfortunately lower levels of maturity appear to be the norm. Both the research by Hain and her colleagues, and that done by Jones, that was in 2017, found high maturity levels were rare. Let me quote Jones. She wrote, I believe the study sample was slightly skewed toward companies that care enough about content to hire content professionals. Based on my experience, I'd put most companies a little lower. That's the end of the quote from her book, The Content Advantage. I hope you remember that earlier in the course, I told you that most content is now being produced or published by non-traditional publishers. Think about it. Why would we expect those organizations to have mature content operations? Regardless of the specific model, maturity level can be diagnosed with something like a questionnaire or by a self-study or an external review because any content strategy development project involves at a minimum self-study, it makes sense to include an assessment of content operations maturity during the project. That's what I'm gonna ask you to do now. So you have a little understanding of common tactics for implementing a content strategy and a little about maturity levels in content operations. In part three of the lecture, I want to help you think more strategically about implementing tactics in order to increase an organization's maturity level. You may find it helpful to download the handout on Canvas that summarizes information from your assigned readings as you follow along for the rest of this lecture on developing a strategic roadmap. I shared this quote with you in an earlier lecture to help you differentiate strategy from tactics. One of the reasons I've found the IPMM especially useful in developing a content strategy is that the model describes in considerable detail the characteristics of organizations at different levels of maturity. These characteristics have been recognized for decades now. I believe they offer the means of talking about how tactics are connected to strategy. So, ultimately, what do you do with a list of tactics when you're developing a content strategy? Following the most current version of the IPMM, I'm going to describe 10 strategic directions content strategy can take to move an organization up a level, or maybe even more, in content operations maturity. Let's start with organizational structure as the first potential direction for a content strategy. This characteristic focuses on the level at which an organization structure supports publishing consistently high quality and efficient content. For organizations with lower maturity levels, content strategy should focus first on centralizing management of content operations. With management representation, the focus can then expand to identifying ways to champion the content needs of customers and innovating in content ops. That includes the tactic of adopting an organization-wide mission statement for content, and it might also mean things like establishing content governance or conducting stakeholder interviews. I'll remind you that one of the two most common ways any content strategy development starts is with the hiring of a new executive. To put it succinctly, content ops must have representation and strong leadership within an organization. If it's lacking, it'll be a struggle to implement any content ops tactics, let alone a true content strategy. The second direction for a content strategy based on operations maturity level is hiring or training. In the IPMM, this characteristic focuses on the level at which an organization hires qualified content professionals and develops them after hiring. For organizations with lower maturity levels, a strategy should focus first on establishing clear qualifications for content professionals. It might also involve the tactic of adding content creation or management into job descriptions for others involved in the content publishing operations of the organization. 
Training opportunities have to be provided in industry best practices. For organizations with higher maturity levels, strategy might expand mentoring and leadership development for content professionals. Note, when the IPMM does not specifically address one of the identified content strategy tactics, I've added a second block on each of the slides. The third direction for content strategy based on maturity level is budgeting. This characteristic focuses on the level at which an organization grants budgeting responsibility to a centralized content ops unit. For organizations with lower maturity levels, strategy should focus first on tracking costs so that the value or return on investment of content ops can be established. For organizations with higher maturity levels, strategy might involve innovating with processes, techniques, technologies, anything that can maximize the ROI of content operations. Several of these are mentioned in other strategic directions I'll cover, cover in other slides. So two characteristics in the IPMM are so closely related that I'm combining them here on a single strategic direction. Planning, which I've added to estimating, scheduling, and tracking, might inform content strategy based on operations maturity level. These characteristics focus on the level at which an organization performs activities that deliver content within scope, which should include meeting user needs, on time and within budget. For organizations with lower maturity levels, strategy should focus on project planning process. That includes the tactic of establishing an editorial calendar at the minimum. For organizations with higher levels of maturity, strategy might look at innovations for project planning, refining workflows through tools or the adoption of metrics for continuous improvement of estimating and scheduling in order to better predict what you can deliver. The fifth direction for content strategy based on maturity level is quality assurance. This IPMM characteristic focuses on the level at which an organization performs activities that promote uniform, high quality standards for content. For organizations with lower maturity level strategy should focus first on the tactics of completing an audit to establish issues and of creating an editorial style guide. Then the content standards can be promoted by getting content professionals or tools involved in developmental editing early in the content creation process. For organizations with higher maturity levels, strategy might ensure high standards and efficiency by adopting workflows where, for example, approvals are granted by an appropriate person and required only once, regardless of how many times that content is used. The sixth direction for content strategy based on maturity level is user or customer focus. In an older version of the IPMM, this was called quality management. This characteristic focuses on the level at which an organization continuously navigates by focusing on users or customers and making decisions based on data. For organizations with lower maturity levels, strategy should focus first on providing content professionals with access to existing data. This could mean tactics that involve content analytics, existing personas, journey maps. For organizations with higher maturity levels, content strategy should ensure regular access to customers for testing content performance. The seventh direction for a content strategy based on content ops maturity level is called information design. This characteristic focuses on the level at which an organization makes content professionals responsible for the design of everything about the content experience. For organizations with lower maturity levels, strategy should focus first on establishing best practices by, for instance, benchmarking content ops against industry standards or against competitors. For organizations with higher maturity levels, Strategy might involve implementing tactics or best practices like structured authoring and content reuse. The eighth direction is closely related to several others. Content strategy can move an organization toward higher levels of maturity and content ops by focusing on taxonomy. This characteristic is one of the newest in the IPMM and describes the level at which an organization manages user search for content. 
for organizations with lower maturity levels, strategy should focus first on establishing problems with user search for content and with tactics to analyze analytics or get data through surveys or a content audit. This establishes the need for governance across the organization to control vocabulary. To achieve more maturity, the focus must include the tactic of modeling content to implement controlled vocabulary and develop a metadata strategy. For organizations with higher maturity levels, strategy might involve purchasing advanced content management systems or authoring tools to support the creation of content that supports effective user search. The ninth direction for a content strategy based on maturity level is called collaboration. This characteristic focuses on the level at which an organization depends upon teamwork when publishing content. For organizations with lower maturity levels, strategies should focus first on ways content professionals can share information with each other, including especially the tactic of an editorial calendar. For organizations with higher maturity levels, strategy could involve cross-functional teamwork where content professionals are peers or leaders with teams from many different business units or product lines. The tenth and final direction for content strategy based on content ops maturity level is change management. The focus is on the level at which an organization continuously makes decisions based on data. For organizations with lower maturity levels, content strategy should focus first on establishing managed change as the status quo. This requires centralized management of content ops and established connections between content and business value or organizational objectives. For organizations with higher maturity levels, content strategy should involve promoting a culture of continuous improvement within content ops. Now back to the question I raised at the beginning of the lecture. What's the best path forward to close the gap between the present state and the desired future state of content operations in an organization? The 10 directions I presented based on the IPMM may be combined into a strategic roadmap in any way that seems appropriate to the current content operations and maturity level of an organization. As you work out your strategic roadmap, keep this bit of wisdom in mind from Rahel Bailey and Nazar Bina. I'm quoting from their book, Content Strategy. It's not necessary to try to jump to the highest level. Even one step up can make an exponential difference in content quality and delivery. End of quote. My final message to you is that as with all plans, a content strategy roadmap is most likely to succeed if it's both aspirational and practical. The ability to find that sweet spot is what makes for a great content strategist. <laughs>